into this game rather than the main damage output. It certainly could be a big factor. Let's get this game going. Arcanine is on the field, turn one. Paired up with the Whimsicott is Chen Pao and gouging fire there for Patrick. Tailwind Rock Slide is looking so good right now for <laughs> Eva. It's never looked better. <laughs> it really, really hasn't. I mean, you can Terrastalize away from that on one of these two Pokemon, or you might have something in the back to be able to take it better, something like a King Gambit, for example. That's the only Pokemon on Patrick team that would be taking resisted damage. But then, you know, in return, Chi and Pao threatening Ice-type, super effective move onto the Whimsicott there. But uh, yeah, certainly Eval looking to be in the driver's seat right in turn one. One thing that I'm really identifying here is that if that Arcanine does go for the Terra Fairy, then the Gouging Fire isn't going to be able to go for a breaking swipe and yeah. lower its attack stats. So a really safe defensive Terra and allows you to get the Rock Slide off. It's not going to land, though, into the Gouging Fire. That's switching out for the King Gambit to take that hit just a little bit better. Rock Slide coming out, connecting into both Pokemon. The question is, is this Jin Pao going to be able to act? Is it going to be flinching? At least it's got that Focus Sash. So it's around to see just this turn. Ice Spinner will be connecting down into the Whimsicott. It's super effective. It's it's not enough for the knockout. A very wow. bulky supportive Whimsicott here from Eva. You love to see it. Whimsicott holding the Covert Cloak means that Eva's focus is probably more on mm. the defensive capabilities of that Whimsicott rather than trying to be as speedy as possible. That's allowing it to take a hit, just like a Focus Sash would be. Whimsicott floating away back to its trainer as quickly as it joined the field. And it's time for our Chaladon to come in. Being a bridge over troubled water, Eva will hope, as Chien Power is able to to keep itself safe this turn. And Rock Slide, of course, given Arcanine is holding the choice ban, is going to be connecting down. And now we cross our fingers for Patrick. Are they going to be able to act? Or is the King oh, Gamma going to flinch and he gets flinch. the flinch, potentially the first of many? <laughs> well, that is what happens when you get a Rock Slide Pokemon to be faster than your opponent's team. It, you're doing damage with that choice band on the Arcanine, but you're also sometimes stopping them from getting a foothold in the game. Now Patrick really has to leverage that King Gambit even even more than he did before, trying to get a low kick onto that Arcanine. It hasn't been intimidated. If it has, it would have done a little bit more damage. But if I'm not mistaken, the low kick would do quite a lot of damage to the Arcanine, and maybe in combination with a Sucker Punch or the Sword of Ruin, might be able to pick up the KO. Things are heating up a little bit as Chien Power goes for, to the back in favor of Gouging Fire, or as Lou affectionately calls it, Party Ente joining the field. He's got his party hat on, and it's ready to rock in the face of a terrestrialized Hisuian Arcanine. It's a playful puppy that just got a whole lot more playful, going for that fairy terror and letting out its customary hat of victory, but it's going to be a responding terror coming out from Patrick. I think it's probably going to be, well, in fact, it has to be the terror on the King Gambit. Terror Dragon uh, actually losing the resistance that it had to it to Arcanine's rock-type moves here in favor of maybe supporting itself a slightly different way. Rock Slide coming into both of these Pokemon, not enough to get any KOs right now, but clever Terrastalization on the King Gambit, avoiding taking damage from the low kick. But <laughs> wow, it's avoiding taking damage on all fronts here yeah. as that low kick does absolutely nothing to the Arcanine. Clever Terrastalization on the King Gambit, but an equally clever Terrastalization onto the Arcanine there. That really felt to me like Patrick's make or break moment in this game but the low kick just doing negligible damage as a result and these rock slide um, the rock slide damage is really just racking up over on Patrick's side of the field it really will all come down to what Patrick's final Pokemon is but whatever it is it's not gonna love taking a rock slide as our Chaladon goes to the back on the last turn of Tailwind as well Whimsicott coming back in ready to set it up again gouging fire for the burning bulwark making sure that it's not getting knocked out this turn but that assault vest carrying King Gambit isn't able to protect itself whatsoever. Patrick favoring the Pokemon in the back and not wanting them to take any more damage from the Rock Slide on this so powerful Arcanine. It's been here the whole game through. It has been, but that Rock Slide does finally get a miss, so that's a little bit of an opening there for Patrick, potentially heading into this next game. Love how Eva cycled in. This Whimsicott now is ready to provide another tail.
Irwin, if needs be, having pulled up the drawbridge of that Archalodon that will be lurking in the back, along with Eval's as of yet unrevealed fourth Pokemon. And uh, frankly, there's not much right now that can be stopping this Asuian Arcanine, and it's looking like it's on really good health as well. A Tailwind coming up from this Whimsicott, making sure that Arcanine is still the strongest Pokemon on the field. Now double connecting with the Rock Slide, it's a double KO. That Chen Pao in the back <laughs> is not looking like it's in a particularly good position. It will be down to a combination of that Chen Pao and the currently unrevealed poor Pokemon to Patrick to see if he has a way to come back in this match. King Gambit on its knees in the face of that Rock Slide. It's finally down and out, and it looks like it is the Fluttermane in the back for Patrick. That's certainly a heavy hitter, and it's holding the choice specs as well. So with those on, it's going to be able to identify its target's weaknesses aptly and get a real big boost to its special attack, as well as, as, well as the 1 HP Chi and Pao, which, you know, it will be reducing the defense of everything around it. That could work out actually against Patrick as well. Um, but still, Eva has the Pokemon advantage with four Pokemon remaining. The question is, is, is there going to be any damage gotten off this turn by Patrick, or is a Rock Slide going to come out and stop that? The Light Screen stopping the Sucker Punch from the Chen Pao. Rock Slide going off, knocking out the Chen Pao. The Sword of Ruin active on that Flutter Main, but not enough to pick up the KO there. Does it get through? It does not. Flutter Main is going to be flinching, and that is just salt in the wound for Patrick here, just dotting the I's and crossing the T's as Ivar quite comfortably takes this game one. Whimsicott for style points, wants to get in on the offensive action as well, goes for the Moon Blast and delivers the finishing blow there. So Ivar really convincing for, uh, well, four and O in terms of Pokemon at least, victory against his opponent Patrick. And I think heading into game two, Patrick needs an answer to Rock Slide. Yeah, no, normally when we say where there's a Rock Slide, there's a way we mean hey maybe you can get a flinch yeah. or a, cu a clutch uh, clutch turn here or there or make sure that your your partner pokemon can do something that otherwise it wouldn't be able to in this case i was like how do you just stop taking damage from Rock Slide? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And that's what Patrick really needs to go back on the drawing board for. I think the difficulty that he has is the lack of speed control. Yeah, that's certainly an issue in the face of a Whimsicott that can so easily click Tailwind. It. And on top of that, no Pokemon that can click Fake Out into the Whimsicott. It's not even got the Ghost Terror of the Whimsicott. It's Terror Water, so Fake Out could be really safe into that slot. Um, it, it's going to be tr tricky for Patrick. Of course, the King Gamma has Sucker Punch. You could see in that previous game why Patrick went for the Dragon Terror to take less damage from the Body Press, but it then did take more damage from the Rock Slide, and the fact that it then went for a low kick in the face of a Fairy Terror Hisuian Arcanine, that's just not going to cut the mustard as mighty as that Kowtow is on his head. So Patrick really, I think, D certainly Ivar played that incredibly well, but also Patrick perhaps needs to consider a Terra at some other point in the game. Mm. That's that's one it, of the things that it, came down it's to. It's tough. Right? If the Terra didn't go off that turn, the low kick would have knocked out the King Gambit. Maybe that would have led to a little bit of a more tricky situation for Patrick. Looking at game two, though, what I'm, what I'm looking at in uh, Patrick's team is that King Gambit. It was in the back in game one, and that allowed Arcanine to get off onto the field, get the Intimidate off without mm. proccing a Defiant ability, and therefore was just able to sit there doing lots of damage. If that King Gambit comes into the four turn one, gets an attack boost, maybe we're talking about a different game. It's a really good point, and it's also running Iron Head, so it can be hitting the Asuian RK9 for super effective if it does go for the Fairy Terror, but it's not going to be the King Gambit being oh, led in like this, this game. It's going to be gouging fire, Ogre Bomb Wellspring, Asuian RK9, and Whimsicott once more. Ben, why do you like this? I love this because of the ability for Gouging Fire to go for a Howl, get the attack boost onto Gouging Fire and Ogapon and offset the Intimidate. But Ogapon, most notably, is threatening the early terror onto the Arcanine, and that gives Patrick a lot of room to manoeuvre uh, in the way that he approaches knocking out that Arcanine. When the King Gambit potentially comes in. It could come in on the switch in from the Ogre Pond and get a howl off on its own and then maybe go for an Iron Head once you know what the Arcanine has terrestrialized into. Hisuian Arcanine running like the tailwind off the battlefield and instead it's going to be Archer Ludon joining the field as Howl does indeed come out from Patrick's Gouging Fire, raising the attack of both of these Pokemon to neutral at least here. Ivy Cudgel free to go off into the Archalodon. It's a Dragon type. It's not going to be taking too much damage at all from that. Unfortunately, no critical hit. Stamina, though, is able to boost up the defense, which could be huge for Body Press later on. There's Moonblast, gets a special attack drop on Gouging Fire. Doesn't matter so much. It is a physical attacker.
The question here is how long will it be before the Arcanine comes back onto the field? And at what point does Whimsicott feel like it really needs to go for a Tailwind? Now that Gouging Fire is back to neutral stages of attack, with, the question is, is whether or not the Heat Crash is enough to knock it out this turn and stop a potential Tailwind for later, or whether it's not enough because we've seen how bulky that Whimsicott is, and therefore can the Whimsicott go for another Moonblast whittle down this gouging fire a little bit more. It's a bulky po it's a bulky Whimsicott, but it's quite a light Pokemon, and of course Heat Crash comes down to the weight difference between them. So with the Tailwind being set up, Gouging Fire is still gonna be moving first. How much is it gonna be doing? Yes, Whimsicott is able to survive as Body Press was targeting down that Ogre Pond at Wellspring. So well covered there by Patrick. And a good Heat Crash damage there now into Ivar's Whimsicott. The, uh, again, we're, we're in this sort of situation where do you want to knock out the Whimsicott this turn? Do you want to cover a potential switch in there for the Whimsicott? Or do you want to spend the time that you've got while Ivar's in Tailwind, boosting up your Gouging Fire and your Ogre Pond, ready for when that Tailwind expires and then you can hit back a little bit later? Well, that doesn't seem to be the option Patrick's going for right now as Fluttermane, the Social Ball, joins the field. It wants to be part of the party. And here it is gleaming away as Encore attempts to come out into the Ogre Pond on Patrick's side, locking it into the Spiky Shield. But Howell will be coming out from Patrick's Gouging Fire. That's going to be boosting the attack stat of, crucially, the Gouging Fire itself. But Flash Cannon coming out from the Archaladon. Ivar calling a switch up. That's super effective into the Fluttermane. Fluttermane known more for its special bulk, and so is able to take that really, really well. What a great read there coming out from Ivar, just making sure that regardless of what was going on, the Archaladon's feeling pretty safe in this position. So why not just go for the Flash Cannon? If you don't get it quite right, that's okay. Ogapon and Gouging Fire really struggle to do damage to Archaladon, especially when it's at one stage of increased defense. So really like that play from Ivar and certainly one that's going to make a big difference to this mid game uh, where the Flutter Main's not going to get as many opportunities to go for an attack. It's now in range of another Flash Cannon. It's now in range potentially of a Moonblast from that Whimsicott, depending on how that Whimsicott is trained. But has Ivar called this switch as Flutter Main returns once more in favor of Ogre Pond. It loves being the center of attention. What with that follow me move? And it's back on the field, but this time Whimsicott is able to encore <laughs> the Gouging Fire. So that is going to be locked into going for Howl. So now Ivar's going to want to be taking care of the physical attackers on Patrick's side before they uh, lose that Encore in order... Well, at least the Ogre Pond is going to be uh, free from the Encore because that was targeting down into the Gouging Fire. Flash Cannon just to cover if the Fluttermane stayed in, going into the Ogre Pond for a nice little bit of chip damage. There's definitely worse things to be Encored into yeah. in this position and a really clever switch there from Patrick, making sure that thinking like, hey, I'm probably going to be Encored here. Burning Bulwark doesn't block the Encore, so it would have been a, definitely a really disadvantageous position to be going for that move in front of a Pokemon with Encore. Might as well switch the Ogre Pond in, get another attack boost, and put it into a prime position to be able to knock out that Whimsicott. Most notably, there's a stamina boost onto that Archaladon. If this Ogre Pond can crit through that defense boost, it's going to be doing a lot of damage. Well, now it's snowing on the field, so Ninetales is going to have an immediate defense boost as a result of that being an Ice type. But yes, a critical hit chance that would be able to hit right through uh, any other defense boosting capabilities. Body Press already doing a lot of damage to the Ogre Pond with the stamina boost. It's received nine tails, able to hang around with just a sliver of HP. It's holding the life all remember. So if it were to go for a move now, it would be going oh. down as a result of the recoil. But this is a tricky turn because you want to be able to spiky shield away from uh, the freeze drive that nine tails has its opportunity to go for. But if Ivar had switched in the Whimsicott there, it would have been able to encore the Ogre upon into the spiky <laughs> shield and put a lot of pressure back. That's not what happened instead. Just a spiky shield and another how this ogre pod is really looking like a prominent threat. Blizzard, the follow-up from Ninetales doing actually really quite respectable damage, but knocking itself out to its own life orb recoil. Now the Whimsicott's getting in for free. 
Now the Whimsicott is getting in for free, and that's the end of the encore there on the Gouging Fire, but with Whimsicott just lurking in the back, ready to come and provide another round of applause. That could be a very, could spell disaster for this Gouging Fire. That's and yeah, so cool. fantastic damage from the Blizzard coming out from the Alola Ninetales there as well. Yes, it went down immediately, but it may well have provided all it needed to on the field in the face of this Gouging Fire. But now the Whimsicott has the opportunity to go for the encore into the Ogre Pond spiky shield. You could follow me with your Patrick to be able to deal with that or go for a, a little bit more of a defensive switch, reveal your last Pokemon there and see if that, that's enough to be able to uh, you know, get, get a little bit of traction going here. The Whimsicott equally though could just go for the Tailwind, expecting Patrick to go for a little bit more of a defensive play and really capitalizing on it with that Archaladon. Well, the result of having so many boosts to your physical attack is that you have a little bit of a target on your back. A heat Crash is going to be connecting down, first of all, into the Archaladon this time. That's a lot of wow. damage into the Archaladon. It gets another stamina boost, but that is fascinating to see how much damage that did as Breaking Swipe is going to be able to start reducing the attack of this Ogabon, cutting it down to size a little bit as Gouging Fire will be going down finally on the field but as long as Whimsicott's there, there could be a cheeky Encore coming out, but not if the Ivy Cudgel is going to be taking out the Whimsicott. So now it's two Pokemon on either side against Patrick's three. A wise Tailwind, I think, there. The Whimsicott certainly also had a target on its back, being the Pokemon that can use Encore effectively. Yeah. You definitely want to remove those opportunities for disruption in your opponent's team to be able to give you the freedom to play the game that you actually want to play. But here it is back on the field, Arcanine with that choice band in the tailwind. It was a menace in game one. Game two, it's not done quite as much work, but it's looking in prime position to just rock slide away for the rest of the match here. Yeah, it really is. And Chi and Pao, I really like that Patrick's kept this in the back. And I'll tell you another thing that both these trainers kept in the back, and that is the terrestrialization. That could completely turn the tides of this battle as Ogapon is now just at plus one of its attack, thanks to the Intimidate coming on. For coming in from the Hisuian Arcanine as well. Chin Pao going for that Terra Stella is able to get a one-time boost to any of the moves it so chooses to go for. And for Ivar, it's looking like the Terra option is going to have to be the Arcanine. Yeah, looks, I think that's probably likely, Charlie. I mean, you don't want to be terrestrializing your Pokemon on just a few hit points here. You definitely want to make sure that the Arcanine is keeping itself as safe as possible. But it's a Terra Stella first from the Chen Pao. Oh, what a sparkly cap there, <laughs> increasing the damage of all of its moves just one time over. One time, we'll have to see if one time is enough as Ogapon will be keeping itself safe and will be dealing a little bit of recoil damage to anything that makes contact with it. Sucker Punch is able to connect down into the Arch Aladon. That's nice. going to be easily enough for the knockout. That is the Sucker Punch boost burnt on that Chi Power, but it still has access to boosted fighting and indeed ice type moves as Ogapon will be keeping itself safe from the Arcanine. The Rock Slide is not going to be enough for the knockout on the Chi Power, and crucially, Chi Power acting first so it doesn't have to worry about any flinch. The qu uh, it's really difficult, right? Because you want to be able to, uh, in Patrick's position, get through the remaining two turns of Tailwind on Eva's side to be able to attack with that Chen Pao in the end game. You kind of preserve your Terra Stella boosted Sacred Sword for the last turn mm -hmm. once your Chen Pao is in a position to be able to go uh, before it. So you have the Fluttermane in the back. Patrick has the opportunity to switch that in and be able to preserve the Chen Pao. Then you can go for a Protect on the next turn. Then the Tailwind should be over. You can go for that Sacred Sword. The question is, is it going to be enough to knock out the Arcanine? And will the Arcanine be able to hit with Rock Slides in the meantime? Hit with Rock Slides, and also, is the Arcanine going to Terrastalize at any point? That's another mind game that's going on here. Unfortunately, the Rock Slide able to take out Fluttermane and the Ogapon before it was able to act and get off that Ivy Cudgel that would have been so detrimental to Eva's Arcanine. So now it's cat versus dog on the field. We're going to decide once and for all which one is going to be taking the crown here. And of course, in that previous turn with the snow active, the Chien Powers, they will say that rock slide a little bit better because it had that boost to its defenses. It has that focus sash on anyway, but now the mind games are real. Do you yeah. go for the boosted ice type move thanks to the Terra Stella in case the Arcanine goes for the Fairy Terra? Or do you go for the Sacred Sword hoping that it doesn't? I 
I think you go for the Ice Spinner. I think yeah. that's oh, yeah. what I'd be locking in here because the Sacred Sword would probably be enough to get the KO if Arcanine does go for the Terrestrialization. But if it's... Ah. Oh, there's oh, no well. Protect here. It was one more turn of Tailwind left and Eva is connecting with the Rock Slide. Shen Power is going down this time. Eva taking this set 2-2-0. Two, two, Congratulations to Eva Vliga. Congratulations indeed, Ivar. Really looking quite relieved in that position.